Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for the 16th of January 2022. In this video, uh, Jean reads us our Bible reading from 1 Corinthians, uh, and then we think about it, and then there is a song of faith expressing some of what it says at the end of the video. The reading today is taken from Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Concerning Spiritual Gifts Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given, through the Spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the things that's a bit of a puzzle about St Paul's letters uh, is that they haven't got an enormous amount of detail about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, about the things that he used to say, about the things that he used to do, and a kind of potted biography of how his life planned out. Uh, they're much more uh, about uh, how the Christian life is supposed to work in the lives of believers. Uh, Paul obviously did know the things about Jesus' life, but they don't come out uh, in the letters uh, very much. When I was uh, newly qualified as a vicar, one of the things that used to be talked about in in-service training very much uh, was the question of modernism versus postmodernism. Uh, people with a modernist frame of uh, mind of looking at things, uh, people my age and uh, down to about five years younger than me, are modernists. Uh, that's to say, uh, they are convinced of the scientific method, uh, they look for evidence, uh, and their question is about the truth of what we believe. Uh, people younger than that are what's called postmodernists. That's to say, they're more concerned with whether something works than with the theory behind whether it's true or not. The question is not uh, whether the Christian faith is true, but rather uh, whether it works in your life, whether it actually delivers the goods. And although that sounds like a modern debate, uh, in fact it's strangely relevant to considering uh, about the Bible as well. In this Bible passage, uh, St Paul, although he's quite convinced that Jesus is Lord on objective grounds because of the evidence for the resurrection and so on, uh, nevertheless uh, he's more concerned in this letter with the question of how the Christian faith works in people's lives. Uh, he came to Corinth uh, around about the year AD 47 or 48. Uh, his visit is recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. 
Uh, and he found other people who already believed in Jesus there, particularly friends of his, Priscilla and Aquila, uh, who were from Rome and who obviously were believers in Jesus uh, because of the way that they later on corrected uh, Paulus on his beliefs. Uh, and he reasoned with the people in the synagogue and a new church was born as people who had formerly been Jews as well as those who had been Greeks realized about Jesus and turned their lives over to him. But the great thing about the Christian faith was it worked. Uh, God put his Holy Spirit into people's lives and people discovered that they were equipped for new ways of service. Uh, they had new insights into the way that God saw things and they had a new direction and purpose about their lives. Uh, the Christian faith was very much about the Holy Spirit whom Jesus had given to people. It wasn't so much about the facts of Jesus' life, so much as how those facts worked out in people's lives. And so Paul wants to kind of uh, establish some connections and set out some principles about the way that the Holy Spirit works in our lives and the practical difference that Jesus makes. And here are some of the principles. The first thing is there is a deep connection between the Holy Spirit and uh, the, 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 the physical uh, existence of Jesus and his life and his ministry. I want you to understand uh, that no one can declare that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit and no one uh, can say Jesus is cursed if he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was absolutely fundamental to the life of these Christians and Jesus was the person who made the Holy Spirit tick in their hearts. We live in a society where anybody can say that Jesus is Lord. It's not controversial. Uh, Christianity may not be popular, but it's widely recognised that it is a fact uh, about uh, people's uh, beliefs these days. Paul lived in quite the opposite. Uh, you wouldn't dream of putting your head above the parapet in Roman society and saying Jesus is Lord uh, without uh, incurring thereby the displeasure of the Roman authorities who thought that Caesar was Lord uh, and without uh, kind of uh, putting your life on the line. Uh, no one can really give themselves to Jesus uh, unless the Holy Spirit of God, the uh, existence of God himself, has come into their hearts and has motivated them uh, to do uh, that uh, declaration of faith. But what does the Holy Spirit do? Well, the Holy Spirit brings gifts and ministries into people's lives. Now, actually, there's a question about how to translate it. Uh, in verse 4, he says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. In verse 5, he says there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Um, in verse 6 he says there are different kinds of working in verse 7 he says to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit uh, another word uh, which is commonly used uh, and is in other parts of his letters uh, is the ministries of the spirit uh, the point about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and he enables us to be of service to others he enables us to make a real difference uh, in the life of the world and in the life of other people. To each one is given a manifestation, a ministry, a gift of the Spirit for the common good. The whole purpose of it uh, is not particularly the edification of the individual believer, but rather the building up of people. Uh, people often say to me, well, I haven't really got any particular gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I think uh, the answer to that implied question is, uh, well, we need to look uh, to ways in which we can serve others. We live in a world in which there are big needs, uh, in which uh, there are people locally uh, who have got uh, needs in their individual lives and in which there are big things going on uh, where there are many needs uh, in the world. Uh, and each of us uh, can find ways in which we can serve. The whole trouble uh, about many churches nowadays is that they feel a bit like buses with the vicar uh, and maybe one or two assistants driving and everybody else sitting there as a passenger and uh, looking out the window or, or looking at the front. But really the church is not supposed to be a bus, it's supposed to be a body where everybody has got some particular kind of ministry. 
Uh, and if you feel uh, that you have no ministry in the church, uh, well, uh, it means that we need to look more closely at what the needs of people are so that we can get uh, involved in serving them. Paul gives a whole list of ministries uh, in uh, this uh, part of the scripture. And some of them uh, make us scratch our heads, don't we? This gift of wisdom or knowledge or uh, miraculous powers or speaking in tongues or or interpretations. Uh, What are those? Uh, But in other parts of Paul's uh, letters, he can get very practical about what the gifts. People have been given gifts uh, of caring, of administration, of healing, of helping, of assistance. Uh, All of those kinds of things come from the Holy Spirit. And they uh, enable us to be of service one to another. And each of us uh, ought to ask ourselves, in what way can my own gifts be developed? Now some of these uh, might be quite natural. Uh, Obviously we have people who clean buildings, we have people who make coffee, Uh, we have people who ring others up and ask how they are. Those don't require particular uh, training for Uh, There are other people uh, whose gift uh, is perhaps in music, in learning a musical instrument in order that people can be enriched by worship. Uh, Something like that uh, obviously needs a deal of practice uh, and a lot of perseverance to bring the gift on. Uh, And Paul envisages both uh, in this passage of scripture. Uh, There are gifts uh, which seem uh, entirely uh, given by the Spirit, a gift of caring, Uh, But behind a gift of caring, there's also uh, an insight of practicality and a knowledge of the background, Uh, perhaps uh, what social services uh, used to call a degree, uh, so that uh, people can uh, be informed about the way they do things. Uh, In bereavement, uh, there is listening, but there is also bereavement counselling. One of them is a gift but the other needs training for as well. Each of us ought to ask ourselves uh, how we can train ourselves in gifts and how we can bring on the gifts which God has given us by his Spirit. If we do, uh, then we discover uh, that in these different kinds of working, the same God works in all of these things uh, and he brings about something wonderful in us in order that the world may be transformed by his love. Jesus is Lord, God sends his Holy Spirit. Jesus is Lord, God sends his Holy Spirit to speak within our hearts and show his Christ and God. Jesus is Lord, though others once had influence to lead us into evil, now we know that Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord, let all the world acknowledge, Jesus is Lord, this message we proclaim. Jesus is Lord, we find in him our courage as we work with him to the glory of his name. Jesus is Lord, so speak your words of wisdom, equip us with your knowledge and increase our faith. Jesus is Lord, come send your Holy Spirit and teach us your discernment as we know that Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord, let all the world acknowledge, Jesus is Lord, this message we proclaim. Jesus is Lord, we find in him our courage as we work with him the glory of his name. Jesus is Lord, he came with gifts of healing, and miracles and prophecy are ours in him. Jesus is Lord, the Spirit comes to manifest his tongues, interpretation, all the gifts of Christ our Lord. Jesus is Lord, let all the world acknowledge, Jesus is Lord, this message we proclaim. In him our courage as we work with him to the glory of his name. That's the end of the second of these three videos of worship, and again to follow us into the third, where we have a time of prayer as well as singing songs of worship. 
please just choose it when it appears after I've finished speaking on the screen. I will see you there.